Is it uh, no? Here we are. Welcome to Clinical Conversations at High Noon with the Green Nurses at Holistic Caring Network, where we bring hope and inspiration for growth and healing. And we are truly here to change the dialogue and stigma around what it means to feel good and be high. Hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. And here's a little video about what we do in the cannabis space as nurses. And then we're gonna get started. Let me change the paradigm of healthcare. The green nurse is a holistic cannabis nurse that teaches on the endocannabinoid system and the safe utilization of cannabis and other progressive tools to help people reach a better quality of life. I'm the founder of Holistic Caring. We're based here in California and we do educational programs and case management for patients on how to use cannabis therapeutically as a medicine. We're also here to decrease stigma around what it means to feel good and be high, hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. As the founder of Holistic Caring, I basically over, oversee the, the whole ship. And what we're doing is uh, progressive education. Cannabis actually supports all 11 organ systems, our immune system, and all the neurotransmitter signaling systems that give messages to tell our body to either do something or not do something. Because the plant was prohibited, it prevented health professionals, doctors, and nurses from learning about cannabis as medicine. I want to change the paradigm of healthcare and us paving the way into a new vanguard of medicine. And I'm excited to, to really uh, bring this into light. There's a company called Canum that we're uh, uh, merging with, and we will now be doing global education. It's about education, it's about empowerment. It's about teaching people how to feel good, bridging the gap from what they're not getting from traditional medicine, utilizing different plant medicines, adaptogens, tips, tricks, hugs, and nugs of information to support and nourish the most important system in our body. And it's a lot of soul work, a lot of love, a lot of discipline and meditation. I'm using my life work as a testimony to others to learn how they can be their own hero and then go help heal the world. And we are, as nurses, the game changers. Goodness, hello everyone, welcome, welcome. My name is Sherry Tuckus, and I'm the Vice President of Nursing at Holistic Caring and the Green Nurse. And I'm a cannabis nurse, patient, advocate, activist, and a passionate podcaster here to change the paradigm of healthcare with a team of amazing nurses and health professionals across the globe. So people are making great medicines, people are selling these amazing formulations, yet no one is truly educating patients on how to use cannabis as medicine. That's what we do. So I'd like to introduce my business partner, co-host for our monthly clinical conversation, Elizabeth Mack. She is our CEO and founder of Holistic Caring Network with the Green Nurses Operate Out Of. Elizabeth is also Director of Clinical Affairs at Canum in Australia, and we're gonna be launching Canna America soon. And so we're really, really excited to be building uh, global clinics to help more people. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be here. Happy October. Happy. I love fall. My favorite season. I know. It's so, so good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. so, you know, we're going to jump into this. There's a lot to talk about today. But, you know, as we've been building our organization and our ecosystem to help people, what have you seen as the four D's <laughs> and how the four P's are going to fix the four D's? Well, gosh, when we when we look at cannabis medicine in America, you know, we, we think about the dispensaries, right? And uh, we think about the patients and, and then the uh, the practitioners, right? And so in traditional healthcare, they're all linked together. The doctors, the pharmacy, and the and the patient all talk and they get on the same plan. There's a disconnect in cannabis medicine in America and, and everywhere else, but uh, essentially a disconnect between the dispensaries, the doctors, nurses, and the patients. Uh, there's a distrust about the products, the industry itself, the people that are making it up. 
Uh, and then there is disorganization. We've got 37 legal states, but no federal system we, uh, that is uniting them. And instead, we've got a patchwork of really uh, disorganized uh, laws and, and regulations and, and nothing for a patient to really grip onto and understand and, and say, this is for me. And then uh, dosing. Uh, we know that with cl uh, clinical cannabis, uh, when you modulate the, the endocannabinoid system, you're, you're fine tuning uh, and having a, a clinician help support that uh, in lieu of everything else that you've got going on really helps. So we've created the four P's to overcome the four D's. Yes. Uh, the four P's are, are adding process, uh, adding professionalization, adding uh, vetted products and then programs for patients. Yeah. And we put it all together in one ecosystem mm -hmm. that makes it easy to uh, put this right into the treatment plan with everything else you're doing. Exactly. So, so make sure you join us. You go to holisticcaring.com at the very, very top of the page join the network. So in the network, it is run by nurses and there's patients and providers across the globe. We have a free introductory to cannabis course, free patient portal, support group, podcast, webcast, webinars, and a ton of information in our little the new guide. Yeah. Our the, new, the, oh, the PDF, yeah. the medical cannabis guide mm -hmm. is uh, for free. Sign up for the newsletter on holisticcaring.com and you'll get our free dandy little PDF of medical cannabis. Yep. Handy dandy. So what we're going to do is yep. we are going to dive right into our session. So our October newsletter was about cancer and cannabis and how one white mono approach, you know, using cannabis as medicine as you, if you have cancer. <laughs> so, you know, think about as, as nurses, we hear all the time. I, I hear it in the background. I hear it in the groups. Don't ever use cannabis. If you have cancer, you must be nuts or don't ever have chemotherapy if you have cancer, you'd have to be nuts. So two popular answers to the same question is another question. What should I do to treat my cancer, right? And so these are really, really, really good questions. And today we're gonna dig into that topic and discuss how CBD and cannabis may be a helpful tool to do what? Bridge the gap to make current cannabis therapies work better, better to make conventional therapies work better, to decrease the side effects, chemo, radiation, and other biologics and immunotherapies. Yeah, yeah so sure. a little bit more about cancer. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the American Cancer Society reported that if 40 that more than 40% of cancer deaths could be prevented if everyone avoided tobacco, kept a healthy weight with a healthy diet, got enough physical activity, limited alcohol, protected their skin from too much sun exposure, got vaccines against cancer causing viruses, and got their annual screenings. So taking care of the body, taking care of the body temple and, and how we keep ourselves healthy. Uh, but really, you know, we are in the driver's seat in, in so many ways. And we're going to go back to that repeatedly in this conversation. But really taking care of ourselves, taking care of our endocannabinoid system. And we'll talk more about what that is and how that keeps us healthy. But uh, when we think about statistics and the people that get cancer, uh, there are hundreds. There's probably about 200 different types of cancer. Uh, and men uh, can get w one out of two men can get cancer at some point in their life. Uh, and one out of three women can develop cancer over their life. And so it's something that we all need to pay real close attention to because we want to take care of ourselves. Totally. Absolutely. So which yeah. leads to the next slide. What about the kids? Yeah. What about the children? Right. <laughs> so I'm a pediatric nurse. And I've worked in the conventional system for quite a long time doing home infusion chemotherapy, hospice nursing. So, you know, according to the cancer.org statistics, about 10,470 children in the United States under the age of 15 will be diagnosed with cancer this year. So childhood cancer rates have been rising for the past few decades. There have been a majority of treatment advances and we're still, we're still seeking, seeing these desperate, desperate parents, parents looking for all options to help their children. So the good news is that because of major treatment advances in recent decades, 85% of children with cancer now survive five years or more. However, after accidents, cancer is the second leading cause of death in children ages one to 14. That's a tragedy. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. So here's a happy story. Yeah. You know, and this little girl here, you know, we've gotten permission from mom and she's done testimonials before. So this is a story of a child that's used both in their family using both conventional care plus CBD rich formulations. 
-hmm. And so we've been taking care of this child since 2019. And here's her message or her testimonial to mm -hmm. cannabis. So she says, my daughter was diagnosed in 2019 at the age of seven years old with an aggressive brain tumor in her left temporal lobe. She had a gross total resection of the tumor in Boston, which was followed up with six weeks of radiation due to the high grade of the tumor. She was put on seizure medications twice a day, and a seizure was the reason how they discovered the tumor. During radiation, we learned about the green nurses at Holistic Caring, and we were educated, and we began to give her whole plant CBD oil because we learned about the anti-cancer benefits. She did amazing during her prescribed treatments and suffered very few side effects, which surprised her medical team. Her oncologist told us statistically that children with her diagnosis have less than a 50% chance of living five years. We continue to give her the cannabis tincture because we were told by her oncology team that this tumor was highly likely to come back and it could be higher grade. We followed up with MRIs every three months and an EEG the following year that all looked great. No evidence of disease. She was healing in all areas. The medical team decided to try to wean her off of her prescription seizure medication. The green nurses worked with our team and was able to advise us on how to adjust her tincture dose to help with the medication wean. We were successful and she has not had a seizure since the initial one in 2019. We continue with her cannabis tincture daily and brain MRIs every three months. And as of December 2021, she continues to be completely clear of any sign of recurrence of cancer, and her brain is healing quickly from surgery as she grows. Her oncologist, who is skeptical about cannabis helping her, has told us that whatever we're doing is working because my daughter looks amazing for the diagnosis she was giving. We were able to space her brain scans now to every four to five months, and I know that the cannabis medicine is saving her. I'm forever thankful to the plant and to the green nurses for helping to guide us. She is a healthy, happy 10 year old, fourth grader now. And as you would never know, the serious diagnosis she was giving less than three years ago. I hope that any parent facing a situation like this with their child would put their faith into cannabis. I'm so thankful that we did. And this always brings a tear to my eye. Yeah, that's hard to get through that. What a powerful story. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about cancer. What's cancer? <clears throat> what is cancer? Um, so cancer is, you know, a disease of uh, overgrowing cells, uh, you know, as, as we talked about in the opening. Uh, we are constantly replicating our cells. We're constantly, um, it, it, our RNA and DNA is, is, is renewing our body. We're, we're new every seven years and every day we have new cells being made. So Basically, what happens in cancer is that when we are multiplying, there's a there's a glitch, there's a mistake. And so something in that disease cell is spreading uh, into the new cell and is making the wrong copy. So essentially, what we want to do is, is try and, and stay healthy so that the cells replicate into to good yeah. uh, copies that are, are functional instead of spreading the sick cells and the disease cells. And our body should be picking that up, uh, that there is a disease cell that's malignant and that's spreading and that's uh, trying to get nutrients. But essentially, you know, what we want to do is, is shut that down. So um, the immune system has failed to protect us. And, um, you know, the, the cancer cells, uh, they, they grow bigger and stronger. They steal nutrients from other. They proliferate. Uh, they, 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 yeah, but, but they, 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 they take the nutrients from the nearby cells, sickening them. Then they start spreading their, their tentacles off into other areas uh, in the lymph and the, and, the, and the surrounding tissues. And then eventually, if, if it gets, uh, you know, long enough, it, it spreads to different parts of the body. And so the immune system needs to repair that dysfunction. Uh, and what are we trying to do when we strengthen, uh, you know, a number one, take care of the body that mm -hmm. helps the immune system when we're sleeping good, when we're putting the right nutrition into us. Uh, and then if, if we uh, have um, surgery, uh, that is sometimes the, the first thing, but there are conventional treatments. So surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, uh, stem cell transplants, and then uh, sometimes you can progress into clinical trials. And mm -hmm. what the oncologists try to do is balance these initiatives initiatives. Like when do we do chemotherapy? A lot of times they'll shrink a tumor with chemotherapy before they do the surgery so that they can, they can remove all of it. Right. And so it's, there's a dance and then you use radiation just as you were talking about with your patient. Uh, and all of these have side effects. 
uh, and, uh, and issues, little snags in the treatment plan that make it difficult to get through. Uh, and and we can use cannabinoids to help on several of these different Ooh, things on, on, on the, the side effects. Guys, yeah. look at this slide. Jeez. Yeah. So cancer treatments, like, listen, we're not anti-cancer treatments. No. Conventional treatments are extremely important, but they do create their own side effects. And there are many side effects of cancer treatments, regardless of what treatment you have been prescribed. Like I said, I've been an oncology nurse. I'm a chemotherapy nurse. I've mixed chemo. I've given chemo. And I've also done cannabis nursing in the oncology space. So what we see is anxiety, depression, insomnia, nausea and vomiting, lack of appetite, difficulty eating, wasting syndrome, decreased energy, fatigued, and lowered immunity. So cannabinoids can help mitigate all of those side effects. Cannabis can even help prevent nausea and neuropathy caused by chemotherapy when taken at the same time. So there's one thing, um, one side effect that not many people talk about. And you know, you all know I'm a little bit about the woo and truly about spirituality as being the root of cannabis care, the essence of nursing is human caring and that's caring for the entire human experience. So as you can see on this slide here, I wrote existential terror. This is one effect that people don't talk about. And I first heard this term by nurse Jamie when she was presenting on the use of psychedelics for the end of life. And she talked about existential terror in hospice patients. And I've done hospice nursing as well, and, and I've seen this. So as a hospice nurse, I've seen this and it is heartbreaking. And I've also seen it exist in those patients living with a terminal diagnosis who are still fighting for their lives, who are not yet on hospice. So existential terror refers to the cognitive and emotional experience of recognizing the inevitability of death, which is often accompanied by feelings of angst, isolation, feelings of despair, and an awareness of meaningless, meaninglessness. Yeah. So imagine a lot of patients go from high functioning to not functioning at, at all. So we have an obligation as clinicians to address the whole person. The essence of nursing is human caring, mm -hmm. caring for the entire human experience. And that includes all symptoms, bio, psycho, social, spiritual. Yeah. Here we go. You know, so that, I'm all yeah. about the woo. <laughs> well, yeah, but it, just thinking about these side effects, you know, the, yeah. the, a lot of times when, when people say, okay, well, what about cannabis? How, where does cannabis fit in? Does it cause these side effects? Does it treat these side effects, right? right. Everything is a risk benefit, right? Yep. Risk if benefit I introduce ratio. this into my body, A, will it work? How will it help me? Yep. Uh, and B, what can I expect? Uh, you know, and so, you know, if we're looking at nausea and vomiting, right? THC can help activate receptors in the brain that are going to help mitigate some of those side effects of nausea and vomiting. And we can use different formulations. And again, in, in, in conjunction with current treatment. So, so as Sherry was just talking about, and, and as we're working our way into chemotherapy, an hour before that dose, why not put some cannabinoids on board, some CBD in a tincture, uh, some uh, vaping THC, uh, via inhalation prior to, to chemotherapy can also squelch down some of that nausea and vomiting. So yeah. we want to give patients the toolkit so yes. that they can use these various uh, formulations to help with the side effects of that treatment. Yeah. You mentioned neuropathy. Uh, CBD is being studied uh, to be able to stop neuropathy in breast cancer patients that are taking Paclitol. Yeah. And, and, and some of these other new uh, ways to, to, to walk through treatment with cannabinoids in, in conjunction with uh, current therapies, anxiety, depression, uh, some of that neuroinflammation, some of the fight or flight response in the amygdala, thinking about, oh, I saw my grandfather die of cancer. Now I've got cancer and I'm yeah. going to have that and that existential yep. terror, yep. right? But here we can break that cycle by having some, some THC, activating that amygdala, calming down the fear, taking down some of those aversive memories and maybe inspiring a little bit of hope. Uh, I was talking earlier about how even just a puff, uh, can uh, puff you go outside enough. and <laughs> now you can appreciate beauty. If you can tune back into beauty, then you can stop some of that terror in the mind. So, you know, what we want to do is, is treat each symptom with a strategy. Yes. <laughs> it's treat, treat it a is. symptom with a strategy, a, a, a strategy. And this is what we do here. And we sit down goal oriented, 
uh, interviewing with the patients to see what they need. Uh, and then we, uh, we, we walk them through how to mitigate symptoms uh, with this power couple of CBD and yes, THC. I love this. So THC, I was supposed to talk about, it's, it's more strategic. It activates the CB1, CB2 receptors uh, in the body. Uh, as far as dosing, we want to uh, push the uh, brakes and push the gas with that patient in consideration. How are they responding? What are they uh, taking in uh, the conventional care and what are their needs? And then what are the responses? Yes. So as we're using THC, is it enough? Is it strong enough? Are they sleeping? Are they eating? Uh, or it, it, do we need to give more clinically if we're trying to be curative? And we'll talk yeah. about some of the curative natures in a moment. But if we're looking at THC dosing, how do we activate the CB2 receptors that are going to reprogram those immune cells to do the right thing and turn off. And the part that's so cool is you don't need THC alone right. to activate the CB2 receptors in the immune system. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But let's talk a little bit about CBD. So here we have THC, CBD, the power couple. We love them. THC enhances the efficacy of CBD and CBD modulates and softens THC without taking away the medicinal effect. CBD has been such a game changer for so many patients when they use it effectively. So CBD is a great start when you wanna wake up the endocannabinoid system. It works on over 70 targets in the body. It affects all organ systems and all of our neurotransmitter signaling systems. CBD helps to protect and restore our endocannabinoid system by boosting our own natural cannabis compounds, our own internal endogenous cannabinoids soothing our nervous system and immune systems and quieting that inflammation, right? So mm -hmm. CBD, like we said, can soften THC psychoactivity. You know, when patients are working with cannabis as medicine, they want to feel good. They want to feel good. You know, being a little elevated is okay, but when you're new to cannabis as medicine, the goal is to take the least amount to get the most therapeutic effects below the threshold of being impaired. Really just to feel normal again. Yes, to feel Give normal. me a few moments of normalcy. Yeah. Yeah. So CBD keeps our own anandamide molecule. So when we, you know, we're producing our own anandamide by stimulating our endocannabinoid system, if you take CBD, it can activate those other receptors. CBD can keep the anandamide circulating. And so it improves what? Intracellular communication between all of the systems. And the other thing I like too is CBD can help mitigate side effects of conventional therapy, pharmaceuticals, and can increase some of the efficacy. Right, because it, it can potentiate, right? So CBD and, and THC really work well together. And, you know, if we back up and, and just think about the endocannabinoid system and mm -hmm. why this works, our, our ECS, the endocannabinoid system discovered uh, based on the research into THC. Uh, and, and so we have CB1 and CB2 receptors throughout our body. The endocannabinoids that we make endogenously are constantly activating these receptors, anandamide and 2-AG, all over the body so that it can bring us back to balance, homeostasis at the cellular level. Okay. That's the whole idea about all of this. Yeah, and so, um, well, <laughs> but, but well, let's go back and, and, and talk about the, the terpenes because we, we were talking about the cannabinoids and now we're, we're going to talk about the terpenes. Well, I, was just, I like to stay in order. She wants to stay in order, but she skipped around. So. It's okay. <laughs> but so so when, when we're looking at a treatment plan, going back to the patient and sitting down and, and saying, how do we help you meet your goals and objectives in this path and this journey that you're on? So it's not just CBD or THC. We want to use those together in, in strategic uh, allocations and ratios, but we also want to fold in some of the other terpenes and some botanicals that will come complement things as well. Yeah. So a lot of patients, you know, when they come to us, will say like, do I have to use THC? And like, no, you don't have to do anything, right? We, we want to, we want to de develop this, this care plan for you that meets your needs. We want to meet you where you're at. And we're going to educate you along the way as to how THC may be beneficial if you so choose to use it in the future. So look at all these. Ethan Russo did some research and here's a CBD treatment plan looking at cannabinoids plus terpenes together. And it like, you know, it's, it, oh, there you go. Phil, well, Dr. Blair, Dr. Blair, <laughs> beta caryophylline. Here's a plug for Dr. Blair. Mm -hmm. We have seen beta caryophylline, BCP drops. This is a huge plug to you, Dr. Blair. Thank you for tuning in. Um, mm. Beta caryophylline is a CB2 activation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the answer page this morning, I, I was reading it to Sherry earlier, uh, was talking about how people are weaning from cigarettes 
uh, by using some uh, beta carioflane. They had a vape with black pepper beta carioflane in it, and it, it mitigated the anxiety and it helped reduce some of that drive uh, for cigarettes. So uh, yeah, it, it can be done in so many ways. But if I look at the pain, anxiety, uh, insomnia, focus, depression, and gut health, uh, these are all things that, that cancer patients are struggling with in, in one patient. So it's not an either or. We want to fold in the completeness of this yeah. uh, to get full plant, whole spectrum as much as possible using terpenes to influence uh, outcomes yes. it, it, it eventually. So if we're looking to, to decrease pain and anxiety and to promote sleep, we're going to be using more of the sedating terpenes. Yep. If we're going to have focus, energy, and, and participation and, and getting people to show up at the dinner table, uh, that, you know, we're going to want more in, invigorating terpenes. But yes. it's the terpenes that drive that effect. Totally drive the effect. And Dr. Blair, you know, I would add a few more. So we're looking at gut health, mm. CBD, CBG, lemonine, and I would add BCP to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would actually add BCP also to depression. Yeah. Because when you're activating CB2 receptors in your gut, you need to remember your microbiome, your enteric nervous system communicates to your central nervous system via the endocannabinoid system. So I would actually add BCP. And, and all of the well. neurotransmitters, right? Yeah. And, and so uh, gut health is brain health and mm -hmm. neuroinflammation, which causes depression. So we can tune all of them down by mitigating the infl uh, inflammation, yep. which is key in using cannabinoids. Yeah. Okay. Key, key, key. So we love minor cannabinoids and terpenes. So let's get into this. Okay, this is a little handy dandy slide here um, that kind of talks about cannabinoids and breast cancer and the anti-tumor effects and, and psychotropic effects that are listed. So I want to go into a little bit, and, and we can discuss this. I want to talk about the cannabis effects on cancer cells in particular. So preclinical data shows that phytocannabinoids can fight cancer in four different ways. The first way is anti-angiogenesis. It stops the formation of blood vessels, prevents tumor cells from getting nutrients, which is starving the cancer cell. Then we have anti-proliferative. It prevents the spread of cells into surrounding tissues, stopping cellular growth. So proliferative is, you know, it's proliferating, sorry, you want anti-proliferating, stopping it. Then we have anti-metastatic, stopping the spread by altering the genes that replicate it inhibiting the spread from primary site to another part of the body. That's anti-metastatic. And then we have apoptosis, killing tumor cells by triggering the off switch, allowing cancer cell death. So the amazing thing about apoptosis that I love the most is how it, in the presence of THC, THC leaves those healthy cells alone. And in the presence of the cancer cell, THC disrupts the mitochondria of the cancer cell releasing a protein that causes the cancer cell to collapse while leaving the healthy cells alone. Which is the holy grail in oncology, right? Yes. Like it, when we figure this out, and believe me, the NIH has got a whole task force that is finally getting some funding uh, committed to exploring these anti-tumor effects. But if you go to cancer.org, uh, you could look at the PDF of cannabinoids and cancer. I send this out all the time. There's a patient version and a healthcare professional version uh, right at cancer.gov. Just go in there and write CBD, THC, cannabis, uh, and it'll give you the PDF that it brings us right to the state of the art of what is known on this. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's amazing. So this is one of my other handy dandy slides. Yeah. Um, because this next slide gives an example of what an endocannabinoid deficiency might look like in a cancer patient, right? So you have to think about it. Cell replication, replicating cells, creating cells, cell death is controlled by the endocannabinoid system, right? So this is an example, and I'm going to let Elizabeth talk a little bit about this. Of, of what it what it looks like. Yeah, so it, we've got these 330 billion cells that are replaced daily, equivalent to about 1% of all of our cells. Wow. And at the cellular level, each has a lifespan. Uh, and uh, towards the end of that, they get a signal to replicate and to, to, to go through the normal digestion, right? So we can always be renewed. So the on switch activates the ECS to create the endocannabinoids, providing the, the messaging back and forth to replicate the, the cells. Once replicated, the off switch turns on, uh, sending us that feedback loop that the cell has indeed been replicated uh, and activates the, uh, the off replication, right? So now we, we want to control the messaging, right? It, produce, uh, reproduce what is healthy, turn off when it's over, uh, and, and make sure that we're working uh, 
uh, completely well. So the endocannabinoids are patrolling everything. Uh, the receptors are, are seeking when, when we're looking for that nourishment, for that uh, signal back and forth, the receptors will be uh, synthesized and then the, the endocannabinoids will, will fulfill that messaging. And if we're low on the endocannabinoids, we're not getting the right signals uh, to turn off and on and to, to make sure that everything is working ideally. So, yeah, and, and this one, so we've got the, the cell life response, we've got the endocannabinoids, but essentially we're talking about the different processes that are happening throughout the cells. And then this is the science behind the cannabinoids. And there are three different types of cannabinoids. There's endocannabinoids, the ones that we make endogenously, anandamide and 2-AG are the, the two most known. And we've got the phytocannabinoids, so CBD, THC, CBN, CBG, et cetera. And then we've got the synthetic cannabinoids like Marinol uh, uh, and, and Epidiolex is a, a purified CBD, uh, but these are FDA approved uh, synthetic cannabinoids. So what was the big shoe drop for me when I first started learning about the endocannabinoid system? was how the anandamide molecule, which you can see here on the screen, Mimics. and the THC molecule are very, very similar in molecular shape and pretty much do the same thing. So the plant makes THC, we make anandamide, the molecular structure is very similar, goes in, unlocks the door to the largest neurotransmitter signaling systems to help provide what? Balance or homeostasis to all of our other organ systems. I'm going to give you all a brief little review on the endocannabinoid system with my handy dandy umbrella, which I don't have. We can pull it over there. <laughs> but I want you all to imagine an umbrella that you, your body is an umbrella. All of the spokes of the umbrella are your different organ systems, your cardiovascular, respiratory, central nervous system, reproductive system, genitourinary system, digestive. immune system, digestive system. So all of the, in the umbrella is to show the interconnectedness of all of our systems. So you have all the spokes of the umbrella, your organ systems, the fabric pieces that attach to the spokes of the umbrella are those neurotransmitter signaling systems. So the endocannabinoid system blankets on top of our entire body because we have cannabinoid receptors on all of the cell surfaces of our organ systems. And we have cannabinoid receptors at the neurotransmitter signaling junction site. So we produce internal endogenous cannabinoids all day long, on, off, on, off, on, off, to give messages to keep our umbrella going up and down. Think nicely. about the switchboard. Yeah. It's a switchboard of communication. And, and as you were talking, I was just thinking about, you know, the, the way that this is, is constant. Yeah. Right. And it our is. body is such a, a masterpiece at keeping it all stitched up. And the idea that God gave us plants where this ball of grapes right over here can, can, can mimic, be mimicked by this ball of grapes, which is what it looks like to a lay person. Obviously, the chemists, uh, you know, think it's much more interesting. But ideally, you know, what we're doing is supplementing with a, a, a plant that God gave us that nourishes this. So we can eat hemp, we can eat, uh, you know, these, these fatty acids, omega threes and sixes uh, that, you know, we really want to supplement uh, to, to keep it all running well and helping us synthesize and make these. But, you know, and going back to those six cells on the receptors, yeah. they are, are signaling that they need the endocannabinoids to, to help bridge that gap and, and restore signaling back to, to homeostasis. Yep. And when we're not making it, we supplement and we take these phytonutrients from this plant into the body to, to bring us back to balance. And yeah. it's almost that simple. Yes, it is almost <laughs> that simple. And but here's the thing. We're going to give you two case studies. OK, two case studies, mm. same diagnoses, two different outcomes. <laughs> yeah. So, right. So you, here well, we you go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. we have Marta here. So mm. Marta is a stage four pancreatic cancer patient who um, came to us back in 2017. Um, she had failed, they were unable to resect her tumor. She was sent home on hospice, failed chemo, failed radiation, was given a month to live. She couldn't walk, she couldn't eat. And the social worker called me and said, can you please come to her home? Her family has purchased a lot of cannabis and they don't know how to use it and they could use some direction. They, she just wants to be lucid, spend time with her family and not be in so much pain. So when I went to go visit Marta, Marta, um, basically we had come to terms that she was dying and she just wanted to feel good at the end of life so she could have that legacy work with her family. So all she took was CBD in the daytime, 
four times a day and a little bit of THC at nighttime to help her sleep. So over the course of, um, I, I literally, I was checking in and she was doing well and she just kind of dropped off the map. And I had asked, you know, for her husband to call and um, he didn't, but I got a call from her four and a half months later. And Marta said, I can't believe it. It's gone. And I said, Marta, you're still alive. I, I, I'm like, I thought you were dead. You know, and, and your husband forgot to call me. No, Sherry, they, they, they can't find the cancer anymore. Yeah. They can't find the cancer anymore. So this was after five months of using about 100 milligrams of CBD a day and probably about 25 milligrams of THC at bedtime. And Not that, that was it. Not that much. And so her endocannabinoid system was stimulated to the point where it was able to do its job. The cannabis helped to do what? It was anti-metastatic, anti-proliferative, anti-angiogenic, and apoptosis. And then over time, when she had these, these appointments with her oncologist, they said, can you help her come off of some of her medications? And so the doctors would make the tweaks in the pharmaceuticals. And what we did was we helped her to self-titrate and come off of, of the pharmaceuticals that she didn't need to be on. Mm -hmm. So the interesting story about Marta, and Marta is, I'm going to play the video for you guys at the end to show this, is that Marta's husband was diagnosed with cancer and she didn't tell me. So she actually called me up probably, I don't know, like months later. And she says, oh, I just, because she was ordering more, you know, she was checking in, I want to order some more, you know, can you get in touch with the caregiver? And, and basically I asked her, I said, what's going on? And she goes, well, my husband has cancer and I'm treating him with the same protocol, with the same protocol. Yeah. And his cancer is going away, yeah. which tells you it's, it's about the medicine. We need good full spectrum, whole plant medicines by people that know what they're doing, that test it, that, that make good, safe medicines. But I'll, I'll circle back to that. I get to talk about my mom, my, mom. my, my mother. Right. So, so yeah, on the right, that's me with my mom, uh, a, a few days actually before she died. Um, she, my mom uh, would have been 88. She was just shy of that. Uh, and I had actually been treating her with cannabinoids, a good uh, four to one oil during the day and a, and a one to one oil in the evening, helping both with um, uh, vascular dementia that was uh, advancing. Her short term memory was shot, but she also had hypertension. She had diabetes, metabolic syndrome, uh, cardiovascular issues, uh, statins, all of this. Uh, and basically over the, for the last two years of her life, she was taking uh, these oils and tinctures that we would send her. Uh, and um, it, it helped. Uh, she was better. Uh, when I took her to the primary care doctor, uh, her blood pressure was down uh, as I started to uh, increase the oils a little bit because I wanted to preserve her memory a little bit more. Uh, and, and then what happened was she got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Um, I came back from a trip, a business trip, and she was yellow at the kitchen table crying. And it was a very fast uh, transit for her. Uh, uh, obviously, you know, at, with, the, with the dementia and everything else that we were working with, my decision with my siblings and my mother was to, to use cannabis oils and hospice. Uh, she was 88. She had a lot of other things going on. Uh, and and we, we wanted to just keep her comfortable rather than, well, we didn't have the option of the surgery. We didn't have the chemotherapy or the radiation. You know, it, it was diagnosed. She, she wouldn't have been survived. That. She, no, she wouldn't. She wouldn't have made it. And so that's why we went with the hospice and the cannabis oils, because it was my choice. But what we were able to do was to keep her comfortable um, until just the end when uh, we had to move her to assisted living because the dementia was getting so bad. Uh, and I really do think she had some metastasis to the brain and we had to stop the cannabis oil, but she was doing better. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's two stories of the same cancer, but it's also different life stages. Thank God Marta was only 70 uh, and, and in really good shape. My mom was not in good shape, uh, never, never took care of herself and didn't really want to pay attention to nutrition. Loved her blueberry muffins every single day. She was going to continue to eat them slabbered with butter and there was nothing I could do about it. But you know what? It, the cannabis helped. It played its role. It, it, it played a part every, in each one of these stories. Each, yes, yeah. absolutely. Which gives us, you know, one of these other slides choices. here. Look choices, choices, choices. <laughs> what are the best options for patients? Guess what? All, All of them. them. <laughs> we have to give patients choices. Allow them to be in the driver's seat with the ability to make informed decisions yeah. with proper educations on risks, benefits, 
complementary integrative care. Yeah. So there isn't one path when it comes to treating cancer, right? We look at bio, psycho, social, spiritual care, caring for the entire human experience. Each patient that we work with has a different care plan using different products with the same intention, which is to relieve suffering and improve quality of life. And so think about this. Many patients palliate their care with cannabis while going through conventional treatments. So let's talk about what palliate means. Palliate means to reduce or moderate the intensity of a disease without looking to cure. So we can palliate while seeking conventional care to cure, right? It doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah, and, and it's not an either or, and this is a dance. And and like with Marta coming off of hospice, my mother going on to hospice, and, and you never know, right? Because when I first started giving my mother those cannabis oil pills, uh, when we wanted to up the dose at, at 50 milligrams twice a day uh, of, of the good full spectrum CBD and some THC at night, I was hoping for that same response. I, I You just don't know, but did she sleep? Yes. yes. Was she feeling better? Did she wake up a little more refreshed? Did she smile. She smiled and she, she got an appetite even a little bit more off and on, but we were using them strategically to palliate while yes. she had those, uh, well, she didn't have the conventional care, but Marta did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Getting through that chemotherapy. That's the goal. Yeah. That's yeah. the goal. We did. So, you know, here it is. Cannabinoids from the cannabis plant can help in several ways, right? As the nutrients from the plant, the phytocannabinoids, mimic our body's own endocannabinoids, restoring and supplementing our bodies when we're deficient. So I'm just going to state, make a statement of fact. If you have cancer, you have an endocannabinoid deficiency. You're not making enough of your own internal endogenous cannabinoids to fight that cancer. To keep the balance. To keep the balance. So we work with patients with cancer every day. And the above questions <clears throat> remind us that our education and encouragement is needed for patients to explore all their options. And, and so a lot of us nurses, you know, Elizabeth, you've been a nurse for 35 years and I'm 34 years. Right. And we've got diverse backgrounds. A lot of our nurses have, you know, have come from the space of conventional care and have worked with complex patients and conditions, including cancer and oncology. Um, you know, bringing, you know, we're bringing this knowledge, this new paradigm. Conventional treatments can be very successful, but you know, they need to be monitored and adjusted. Yeah. And we need to think about doing no harm. Patients yeah. don't want to be too trusting, but they also don't want to question their doctor. Yeah. Right. So we are that bridge. It is so necessary when we actually step in knowing conventional care and cannabis therapeutics and bringing that together for these patients, being able to help them make informed choices, putting together that ecosystem, right? Putting the patient in the center and, and structuring the, the treatment team, the resource materials, our programs, our support, our nurse line, uh, and our and our one-on-one -on -one coaching together with the dispensary and the CBD shops so that people can embrace body, mind, spirit, healing, uh, and working together with the holistic coaching that we give them, the conventional care that is being provided by their physicians, uh, and the cannabinoid therapeutics that we help bring them all into perspective. Yes, absolutely. Okay, we got a couple more slides here. So what do we have here going on, Elizabeth? Well, our cannabis and cancer program for this month is 25% off. You just enter <laughs> HEAL25 at checkout. And all of our, our patient programs are designed to be uh, a 60, 75 minute lecture uh, where we show you have all the slides as well, but it walks through cancer. What is cancer? How does conventional care treat it? Uh, what are the shortcomings and limitations? Uh, and then how might cannabis be helpful? Uh, what are some of those preclinical curative measures and the anti-tumor properties? And then how can we palliate? And then what's available? What are the different routes of administration? What are the different products that are contained in each one of them? And how would I start with each one of them for my plan? How do I inhale? How do I take an edible? How do I use a tincture? Literally, how do I use a tincture? How do I calculate potency? How do I, do I, do I put the drops in? Do I hold them? Yes, hold them for 60 seconds in your mouth. Uh, you know, all of this is in these programs and we're giving you the tips and trips, the hugs and nugs, as Sherry always says, uh, to, to be able to be empowered to take this uh, and into your uh, plan and know what to do to have agency and be empowered. That's what it is, agency and empowered. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna wrap up because we got an email from this this patient, which is great. This is another. Oh. This is really <laughs> interesting. So, dear green nurses, this is really really important. Patients want clinicians to learn this. Yeah. We had a patient reach out to us looking for a primary care doctor. 
that knows something about cannabis, mm -hmm. right? You know, I, we get this all the time. We get this all the How time. How do I find a doctor that will be uh, somebody that can guide my cannabis protocol yeah. uh, that is familiar with cannabis that can talk about these products that are in the dispensary? I am a DIY doing it myself, D DIY, and 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 I don't want to be a DIY. I have <laughs> needs that are exceeding what I can provide in self care, and the bud tenders aren't necessarily helpful. So we need to uh, make sure that all clinicians, all nurses have a working knowledge of the endocannabinoid system and, and all of the way that this uh, plant works in the body, uh, knowledge of our systems, knowledge of the regulations, knowledge of uh, our, our own legislative issues where we live and work in our, our hospital. Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. Yeah put out a call to action in 2018. And in case you don't know what the NCSBN is, the National Council State Boards of Nursing is the nursing regulatory board that puts on the exam for all nurses to take in order for them to get licensed. Yeah. So in 2018, they wrote in the Journal of Nursing Regulations, a 64 page document, and they put together six essential areas. Their statement was all nurses, nurse practitioners, Nursing students, advanced practice nurses must have six essential areas of knowledge when it comes to cannabis as medicine. We have a responsibility. <clears throat> Yeah. I went through the first three. The other three are, are the pharmacology mm. uh, and understanding the products, the, the risks and the benefits and the side effects and the interactions. Uh, and then to your favorite, non-judgment. Patients are using cannabis as a therapeutic option. Don't judge them as a drug user. We need to drop the stigma. And how you do that is it, it's called discernment. Yeah. Discernment over judgment and really looking at biases, prejudice, and the dissonance that many people may have around cannabis as medicine because the knowledge is there. The research is continuing to evolve. Once you go down the cannabis rabbit hole, there's no going back. <laughs> the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. And the more I learn and the more we learn as clinicians, the more we're responsible for See something, say something, That's share it. the news. When you learn this, you have to share the news. That's why I got into this, ended up writing a training manual that became a book that became all these programs uh, and it emerged with the Green Nurse last year to bring this all front and center, to take this not only to America, but globally to train clinicians and to support patients worldwide. Absolutely, yeah. worldwide. So um, we've got Coach Sheila Fiorni. Are there easy questions on the exam? No, He's not here. yet. On the nursing, uh, the NCLEX exam, not, not yet. Yes, that's what <laughs> we're doing. So we're actually having, um, we're, Elizabeth is um, treasurer of the American Cannabis Nurses Association. I'm actually honored. I'm going to be running for a running board for position. For the board, good luck. In fact, there's an there's a, a, a election town hall today. Yeah. Go to the cannabisnurses.org website uh, and you can find out more details about that. But right. yes, we are creating the scope and standards of practice for cannabis nursing to submit it as a subspecialty of nursing with the ANA and the ANCC the American Nurses Credentialing Center, uh, that all nurses then are going to be learning this. So uh, please, uh, we can put those links in the chat and yes, um, we can. Uh, get people to be involved. Yeah, so <laughs> this call to action needs nursing instructors who can disseminate this vital knowledge. There's not enough programs embracing the call to action. Ooh, we're, yes, we're, guess what we're doing? We're going to go visit a college. Well, yeah, it, it, <laughs> we're, we're going to visit a college and see if they have this in the curriculum because literally, we can literally uh, supply uh, all of the, the programs in the curriculum that can. are going to train the future nurses. Yeah, uh, Putting the best of the research evidence-based practice, our, our case studies and, and uh, all of the conference notes for the past eight years uh, are, are all uh, building our programs yeah. into being the best of, of what we can. So. Yeah. Uh, please stay tuned and, and visit our programs in the professional programs marketplace. Yes, absolutely. And remember, we've got Heal 25 for 25% 25 off cancer and cannabis program. If you go to the website, sign up for the newsletter, you get a free seven-page medical cannabis guide. Elizabeth and I spent 40 hours on it, <laughs> did a lot of research. It's amazing. And then also we have a network, holistic caring network. If you go to the website, it'll say join the network. It's free. Free intro to cannabis course, support group, podcasts, webcasts, tons of information. And a free community to share yeah. all of the things that we put in there and, and dialogue about current events and topics that are in cannabis news every day. Yeah. And so this has been an amazing podcast. Um, listen, we are so excited and honored to be here. Thank you for joining. Please share the love, share the message of holistic caring in the green nurse. 
We'll be doing, I'm going to be doing another podcast in a couple of weeks. And then we have our clinical conversations again in November. It's not going to be the second. It's going to be the third or the fourth. The fourth. We'll, we'll put it in, in the, the event section in the of our section. website. Yes. And so remember everyone what it's truly about, what it's really, truly all about. It's all about living your best life and helping others do the same. Thank you so much for joining us. And here's another little fun video that I love that moves me. God bless. <laughs> We're here to educate and empower patients to make choices that are best for them. We're also here to decrease stigma around what it means to feel good and be high. Hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. The Green Nurse is a holistic cannabis nurse that teaches on the endocannabinoid system and the safe utilization of cannabis and other progressive tools to help people reach a better quality of life. I was cannabis agnostic for many, many years. And you know, the more research I did, the more I discovered the cannabis is this amazing medicine. I was told that I had a four stage pancreatic cancer. The doctor really told me he couldn't do anything else. He gave me her name and she called me and she came to my house. She started to give me cannabis. My oncologist was puzzled because he couldn't find the cancer anymore. All of the learning that we get yeah. comes from the green nurses group, comes from their support, comes from their guidance. I trust everything that she says. Simply meet people where they're at. The plant doesn't, you know, stress to grow, so we don't stress to share it. We're healing people. Cannabis has been used as a medicine for tens upon thousands of years. Here's the big message. Cannabis needs to be federally legal. We need to have laws that are the same across all 50 states that allow access to anyone and everyone who wants to utilize this powerful medicine.